terminally ill woman holds two-day party for her 30th closest friends and family and kills herself at the end. Betsy Davis, 41, became one of the first Californians to take a lethal dose of drugs under the state's new doctor-assisted suicide law. Davis worked out a detailed schedule for the gathering on the weekend of July 23rd and 24th. The ALS sufferer, diagnosed in 2013, had a rule of the gathering, no crime. The artist could no longer stand brush her teeth or scratch an itch in her speech slurred speech. Davis took a combination of morphine, pentobarbital, and coral hydrate and an outdoor canopy bed and died four hours later and at the end of the weekend. In early July, Betsy Davis emailed her closest friends and relatives to invite them to a two-day party, telling them, these circumstances are unlike any party you have attended before, requiring emotional stamina, centeredness, and openness. The 40-year-old artist with ALS or Lou Gehrig disease held a gathering to say goodbye before becoming one of the first Californians to take a lethal dose of drugs under the state's new doctor-assisted suicide law for the terminally ill. For me and everyone who was invited, it was very challenging to consider it, but there was no question that we would be there for her, said Niels Alpert, a cinematographer from New York City. The idea to go and spend a beautiful weekend that culminates in their suicide, that is not a normal thing, not a normal everyday occurrence. In the background of the lovely fun, smiles and laughter that we had that weekend was the knowledge of what was coming. Davis worked out a detailed schedule for the gathering on the weekend of July 23rd and 24th, including the precise hour she planned to slip into a coma and shared her plans with her guests in the invitation. More than 30 people came to the party at a home with a wraparound porch in the picture's Southern California mountain town of Ojai, flying from New York, Chicago, and across California. One woman brought a cello, a man played a harmonica, there were cocktails, pizzas from her favorite local joint, and a screening in her room of one of her favorite movies, The Dance of Reality, based on the life of a Chilean film director. As the weekend drew to a close, a friend kissed her goodbye, gathered for a photo and left, and Davis was wheeled out to a canopy bed on a hillside where she took a combination of morphine, pentobarbital, and coral hydrate prescribed by her doctor. Kelly Davis said she loved her sister's idea for the gathering. Obviously, it was hard for me. It's still hard for me, said Davis, who wrote about it for online news outlet voice of San Diego. The worst was needing to leave the room every now and then because I would get choked up. But people got it. They understood how much she was suffering and that she was fine with her decision. They respected that. They knew she wanted it to be a joyous occasion. Davis took her life a little over a month after California law giving the option to the terminally ill went into effect. Four other states allowed doctor-assisted suicide with Oregon the first in 1997. Opponents of the law warned it could become a way off for people who are uninsured or fearful of high medical bill. Marilyn Golden of the Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund said her heart goes out to anyone dealing with a terminal illness, but there are still millions of people in California threatened by the danger of this law. Davis spent months planning her exit feeling empowered after spending the last three years losing control of her body bit by bit. The painter and performance artist could no longer stand, brush her teeth, or scratch an itch. Her caretakers had to translate her slurred speech for others. Dear Rebirth participants, you're all very brave for sending me off on my journey, she wrote her invitation. There are no rules, but what you want, speak your mind, Dance, hop, chant, sing, pray, but do not cry in front of me. Oh, okay. No rules. During the party, old friends reconnected and Davis rolled in and out of the rooms in her electric wheelchair and onto the porch talking with her guests. At one point, she invited friends to her room to try on the clothes she had picked out for them. They modeled the outfits to laughter. 
guests were also invited to check a Betsy souvenir, a painting, beauty product, or other memento. The sister had placed sticky notes on them, explaining each one's significance. Wearing a Japanese kimono she bought on a bucket list trip she took after being diagnosed in 2013. She looked at her last sunset and took the drugs at 6.45 p.m. with her caretaker, her doctor, her massage therapist, and her sister by her side. Four hours later, she died. Friends said it was the final performance of the artist, who once drew pictures on a stage with whipped cream. What Betsy did gave her the most beautiful death that any person could ever wish for, Albert said. By taking charge, she turned her departure into a work of art.